To understand the charging process, first I took a lightning connector and cut it and connect its negative and positive terminal directly with a 5 volt power supply. Like you guys, I was also thinking the phone will start charging, but it didn't. So I did some research and found Apple requires some special voltages on its data pin. So I joined both data pins together and added two resistors with the positive and negative terminal. And after that, the phone starts charging. But the problem is, how much current we supply, it draws the maximum of 2.4 amps, which is roughly 12 watt. But according to the specs, this phone supports fast charging of more than 20 watt. But for that, we must have to use Apple certified cable. But why? To get that answer, I stripped down the original lightning cable to inspect the inside. And surprisingly, I found a tiny circuit board inside the lightning port. And after some research, I found this chip is called C91, which communicates with phone and allow to accept fast charging. So to make my iPhone type C and fast charging supported, the idea is to extract the charging board and remove the lightning port, attach the C91 board and then add USB type C at the end of it. And it will be done. But as it is my new phone, and I'm not an expert to open such device. So I was quite nervous. But for the sake of experiment, let's do it. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. <laughs> Guys, maybe accidentally I just cracked the screen. <laughs> it really gave me mini heart attack, guys. Thank God. <laughs> okay, let's continue. After detaching the display from the motherboard, I started to find the sweet spot for C91 board to fit in. My plan is to put the C91 board as close to the lightning connector as possible. But Apple tried to utilize almost all the spaces as they can. But you may still find many blank spaces. But this space is left blank because this is where the display eyes will sit. You may find lot of space around the battery. But this space is reserved in case the battery expands in future due to degradation. Also the C91 board is bit tall. Placing it in this position will block the display. After searching a lot, I found a place where it could be fit. But it's quite stressful to connect its one side with lightning port and another side with USB-C. So I decided to go with another plan, plan B, where I would use all the components of C91 board with USB Type-C to make a single PCB so that there will be no hassle of connection. So without wasting any time, I started to finding this IC and its datasheet online. And guess what? There was not a single datasheet on the internet to understand the IC. Then I thought to reverse engineer. But Apple used some special glue to fix the IC and other components. So it is almost impossible to remove them without damaging. That's why plan B is not possible. So I had no other option but to revert to the first plan. To make two separate flexible PCBs. But later I decided to make everything in a single flexible PCB. As flexible PCBs are quite expensive. After that I captured a photo and took that photo in Photoshop. And set it according to the size of the phone and continue to draw outlines as the PCB would be like. After making a rough sketch, I printed it out. Then I cut the template along the lines and placed it on the phone. It didn't fit well, so I kept modifying it again. When this part of the template looks satisfying, I detached the charging board from the phone and then removed the lightning port with hot air gun. 
Then I started searching the Type C connector, keeping in mind that it has to be similar in size as compared to the Lightning connector. After a lot of searching, I found the perfect USB C for iPhone. As it has similar type of mounting flange, so it can be mounted directly at the Lightning connector's mounting point. And it's waterproof as well. So I modified the flexible PCB sketch little bit according to the connector and after printing it out, I checked everything again. USB-C will sit at the bottom of this layer, which will be bended like this. And another side of the PCB will pass from here and will be connected with C91 boards one side and another side from here. It is a complex design, but everything looks fine. So I exported this layer and drag it into Altium Designer to design the PCB according to the layout. Altium is an industry standard PCB designing software where you can design any kind of PCB. You can even share your design directly to your client using Altium 365 plugin. If you want to give it a try for free, then go to the link in the video description. After finishing the PCB, I checked the layout for the last time and everything looks perfect. So I went to PCBWay.com because they provide high quality flexible PCBs at the cheapest rate. And after selecting all the parameters, I placed the order. It will take few days to arrive. At that time, I started to research on any possible ways to increase the charging speed as USB-C is capable of delivering 5 amps of current. But unfortunately, I didn't find much information on this topic. Within a few days, I received a package from PCBWay. They offers multiple PCBs at the price of one. So I ordered as much as could I get for the same amount. If you haven't tried their PCB yet, I highly recommend you to try at least your first PCB. After soldering, I took the flexible PCB and placed it on the charging flex and carefully positioned it above the lightning connector. Then I added a bit amount of flux and soldered it. After that, I soldered both sides of C91 board on my custom flexible PCB. And now it's time to test. But before that, I covered the metal part of the body to avoid short circuits. Then I attached the charging board, screen and battery to the motherboard. Then I connect USB Type-C cable. And for extra precaution, I used a plastic sheet in between the screen and body to avoid any contact with the surface. And finally, I connected the charger. But the phone didn't start charging. Even after reversing the cable, it didn't work. Then I disconnected everything. And using a multimeter, I started checking the continuity of connection points as much as could I check and resoldered the rest. Even after doing all of this, the phone wasn't charging. Then I thought, maybe I have damaged the C91 board while taking it out because the process was very complicated for the original cable. So I bought a few MFI certified cables. And after cutting one, I found it is fake. But Amazon Basics cables are trustable, so I cut one. And after spending several hours, I successfully extracted the C94 board. But while desoldering, the charging board CC pad came off. My whole day got wasted. The next day, I tried another Amazon Basics cable with slightly lower temperature. But the same thing happened again. I immediately went to a store and purchased an original Apple cable. And after wasting another day, finally, finally the C91 board has restored without any damage. And after touching everything again, the phone finally started charging. I was extremely happy. Oh, yeah. But the happiness didn't last long because my phone was charging but at a slow rate, only at 5V, not switching to 9V fast charging. I spent days to figure it out, tried other cables, resoldered multiple boards, but nothing worked. Then I dived deeper into fast charging and found the problem. This is the standard color code for USB, which I followed while designing the PCB. But Apple uses a different color code for data wires, which means I have to flip those data pins. 
but soldering extra wire with flexible PCB is not a good solution. But rebuilding and ordering a new PCB will not only take a huge time but also require some additional money. So I carefully scraped the solder mask out and after breaking the path, I flipped the connection and added solder mask on it and it became as good as a new one. And after attaching everything again, fast charging worked. Also data transfer worked flawlessly. Everything is solved, but only one thing is left. I need to enlarge the charging hole, cause USB-C is little bit thick. Now it fits perfectly. Time to assemble everything back to its original place. Guys, finally, after working so many months, Finally, I can use USB Type-C on my iPhone. And now it also charges at 26 watt with higher wattage power brick. It's a huge success guys. I know all of you have been waiting for a long time for a new video. And guys, I promise the next video will be very soon. Until then, bye bye.